we are recording. Hello, Ed. Hi, Holly. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very casual conversation we're going to have. Yep, this um, is quite casual. Yes, in this lovely room. Yes. Nice casual room. So this is the first B-side recording podcast. Yep. So what we're going to talk about, we just keep looking at each other and laughing, so that's quite funny, isn't it? Um, what we're going to talk about today, this week, is mixing. The excitement of mixing. Fantastic. So usually what we're going to have is guests come in, but unfortunately our guests cancelled. Which is not a great start, no, it's but a shame. it is a shame. But we're still here, and hopefully that will do. <laughs> hopefully, okay. So, mixing. How do you, Ed? Oh no, he's found something. How do you start a mix? That is anyway. That there's not just a specific way. I mean, how do you start it? Uh, how do I start a mix? Tell the listeners. Um, well, it, it depends on. Uh, it de- it depends on whether you are mixing something that someone has given to you, or whether you are recording something and then mixing it. Um, say, for instance, that I've been given a multi-track uh, f- by a customer that they would like me to. Um, mix for them and the master Mm. Uh, what I would do is insert all of the the stems which are the individual audio files the stems um, of each instrument uh, mic microphone or whatever yeah uh, into into logic Um, I would uh, name them and create um, track stacks in logic accordingly Um, I'd start by I'd start by uh, any instrument that has that produces quite a low frequency, or that would produce perhaps um, a lot of hiss, a lot of sound, something that you'd hear in the low end, um, and add uh, EQ and compression. Mm. Um, and then I'd start going over things like perhaps vocals um, and uh, guitar and uh, any other types of instruments that are used. Um, uh, I may then start marking up each section of the track or the composition. Um, If the customer specifies that they would like um, certain effects or certain things to happen in the composition, um, I would note them down in Logic. create markers yep. um, and add automation when necessary. Um, that is what I would do. Okay. What about how, you? How, oh, that was very detailed description. Yeah. Very detailed. So usually our customers, we have two separate sets really, I think, don't we? Mm. Yeah. So usually we have either a studio recording or live video with live audio so we do we record it differently than the other if that makes sense to everybody out there so we do our studio recording we do normal tracking and separate channels and stuff like that in logic because we're all about logic um and for live video and audio i love those laughing we do um four microphones like room mics and then we just do it as if you are on like a stage or something and we video it and then we put that it's a long process actually thinking about it but I prefer doing studio recording than doing the live video and audio because there's a lot more technical aspects that you can do if that makes sense Mm. than other than just Hit and record and then doing it like that. But people like to do in the live video because like, obviously you can't perform at the moment, but we will get into that. Yep. Obviously we're going to get into that. Um, so we had... we had. Um, I love how lighthearted this is. Yeah. It's great. Um, I love how when we had a um, client the other week, it was studio-based, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Um, tell us a bit about that. 
came uh, with his band, um, and he had brought us a. Um, I believe I believe he gave Holly um, some multi-track from um, uh, Ableton that he wanted us to add some vocal parts onto and also a guitar part. Um, and uh, yeah, we recorded. We recorded. Those. It. Where did we record it? Uh, we recorded it in Guildford. Uh, in Guildford. And a lo- lovely little uh, studio. Remote location. Remote location, yes, yes which was very nice. Yep. Um, and we hadn't recorded um, piano for Before. like. I yeah. think we've done it. How many times have we done? We've done it. We've done an organ. We did the organ. We did the Hammond organ. organ. Um, but, but we, we haven't, haven't done, done a piano, piano. Um, on our, by ourselves. We yeah. have recorded a piano before, but not on our own. Yeah. Which we were like, okay, this is fine. We can yeah. do this. Um, yeah, that that went that went quite all right actually. Um, I was quite surprised that that particular piano was in tune. Um, yeah, uh, it's just w- we. Uh, throughout that day, we used a four uh, four channel um, audio interface, um, uh, which allowed us to use um, multiple mic setups on amps um, for backing vocals as well. We had uh, two microphones facing down towards the uh, to the to the vocalists mm. um yeah it was a pretty good day it was very good day. it was very r- it, we it wasn't rush but it was very full on wasn't it was it, it was quite and an was intensive day herbal tea yeah it was taking a, place wasn't yeah, there? there was a, and a lot of uh, you, you don't forget this holly a lot of drinking water there was a lot of drinking water yeah. because becca our creative whatever title she's given herself <laughs> no, well, no, what is she? Hang on, no, she ain't giving it to her. I gave it to her. Creative lead says that Ed needs to drink water because yeah. every studio and now session... I have been. <laughs> I've been drinking water every day. I've not seen you drink water, Becca. Actually, that's fair. She doesn't drink. She Practice what, what you, you preach. preach. Using the sanitizer. Splendid. <laughs> uh, so, when we recorded... When we were, I was speaking to the microphone, Holly. When we recorded Ben and his band, yes, there is uh, some people don't understand that you don't have, uh, you don't record and then mix while you're doing it, but you do do some aspects of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you have to. You can't. You can't just. He'll get microphone. to the point. He'll get you there. He'll get there. You can't just plug the microphone in and then just have an empty uh, track in a project and just go. Oh, that that oh that that's that's enough for uh, that's enough for just a basic record. No, you have to ensure that the levels are sufficient yeah. because if the gain structure isn't high enough, yeah. or if it's too high, you'll either have not enough audio to work with. Um, or if it's too high, then you'll have st- stuff like I don't know, like hiss or yeah. um, feedback issues or clipping. So in there, is, there are some aspects where you you do have to manipulate the sound whilst you are recording. So you technically you're starting mixing as you're doing that because mm. you're recording and mixing at the same time. So what we do is before. So if you're recording, let's say. We set up a vocalist and we put some EQ on there before. So we test her vocals. We do the gain and structure and stuff. And then we put the EQ on and we put like um, some compression on. Mm. And then we may do some reverb, yep. um, which we're a fan of. Um, but I wouldn't say we're going to sit there and expect the vocalist to watch us <laughs> as we <laughs> fiddle with every single thing but what i'm saying is on a separate occasion if someone a fictitious person sat there i wouldn't expect that person i would not mix something as someone is sitting there because it's time consuming and they i don't think that yeah it's interesting to them if they're a vocalist i don't think that they're going to be interested on what frequency we put something at like you know 
But if people want to learn and stuff like that, like Ben wants to learn how to do... We're talking a lot about Ben, sorry. (laughs) Sorry, Ben. (laughs) But if he wants to learn how to do or how we record something, Mm. then that's fine. But I wouldn't have people just sit there and do... Have, like, just watch us mix, because I think that would be a bit too much. Um, It's always good to communicate with the client and ensure that they give us these three things. That they give us song structure yeah so where each part comes in uh goes into a let's say a verse or a chorus um and then has like a tells us who's playing what and where and for how long um we need to know um the arrangement what they're playing um and like uh what we'd learned from uh when we'd recorded the colors the yeah. chords and lyrics. Yeah. The reason we ask for those types of things is so that we kn- we know as uh, producers where each section of the song is supposed to be for how long and what is meant to be played. Because if we aren't given those key components, we then have to uh, spend our time instead of recording so, uh, sorting out these variables yeah. in the studio. Yeah. Um, which, which are time consuming. And yes. when you look at the time and the ca- the clock is counting down and you're just like, oh my God, we've just wasted 24 minutes. I do think like that. 24 minutes on stuff like just because we don't know what, what parts where and stuff like that. So I think that's, Im- I think what you're saying is important that they do. What is it with you in this anti-pack? It's a, yeah. We use this all the time. But no, I, I think is it, <laughs> I think it's important that people do give that to us. But saying that, if we are in a situation where we are working from a plain template, like no template at all, we've just literally got start new session, mm. audio one, that's it. And obviously if we're working like that, which... I would love to do it at some point to just literally work from scratch and not have what someone's thought. I just literally, let's go, let's just start with a loop and whatever and then let's yep. just create that with someone. Because then we know what we're doing. Because mm. it is hard when you have had a session and then they have this thing in their head of what they want to record. Yeah. And there's no. sometimes there's no, I want to do it this way. <laughs> No COVID. Um, I want to do it this way, but I don't want to do it that way. Mm. I want to do it this way that I've said. But it's, it's it, yeah, it's it's frustrating. But communication is, is what key. needs to happen. Communication. I think in a session, things happen that are going to happen, and it's it, like bad things usually sometimes happen, and things happen like that and I mean if you if, you know sometimes it's happening sometimes it's not and I mean I think that's it's just happening Holly no I think it's it depends on it. it's just happening it. you can't I just think it happening. depends on if if um depends on if it's happening if you're feeling someone or not not you know what I mean because he's going to take that wrong but I think it's whether you're put into a situation and you're comfortable with the situation which we try to do but some people if they've never done a studio recording before it's going to take longer yeah and it's and it's going to take time so you can't expect to walk into somewhere and have something drums guitar vocals x y and z or whatever mm. this is for anybody cuz i i did not expect i for me <laughs> that. for me sensible for me I, I like to do, and I don't know about you, and I think you're the same, but I like to do each session as today we're doing this, next week we're doing this, and then the week after we're doing this. Unfortunately, um, many people, many clients seem to think that it is very easy to just get stuff done in a session.